Hey, Scouting with Nick. Today I'm going to be talking about the very first film production I ever got to see in person uh, when Disney's Hocus Pocus shot in my hometown of Salem, Massachusetts when I was 10 years old. Uh, but here's the thing, there's absolutely no way I'm going to get this out in 30 seconds or less. So if you're watching on Instagram, you got to click the little button that lets you keep watching. And for everybody else, um, I think we're good. So I grew up in Salem, Massachusetts, which most of you probably know of as the Witch City. Right now we're standing in uh, Salem Common, which is right in the middle of town. Uh, Salem Common was founded in 1667, um, but in fact it was in use far earlier. Back in 1637 they were doing military drills here, and it's considered the birthplace of the Army National Guard. Uh, as a kid, I used to come here to play with my friends. We'd go on the playground, we'd bike the paths. As we got a bit older, one of our favorite activities was making movies with whatever family camcorder we could dig up. So when we found out that there was going to be a movie filming here uh, we all were super excited and I remember we all came down after school uh, to see what was going on so when you see this shot of Max and Allison uh, walking across the common, me and my friends are literally standing directly behind the camera. It's a great uh, opening shot to present Salem and they, they filmed in October so they got all the beauty of the changing leaves. And right on the common is the exterior for Max and Allison School, which was shot at 86 Essex Street. Once the Phillips Elementary School, dating to 1883, it has since been converted into an assisted living facility. Next up is the main character Max's house. This was shot at 4 Ocean Avenue in Salem, in a home that was built in 1870, which is actually relatively modern for Salem. One thing they don't show you in the movie is that the home is right on the water and actually has an amazing view of the harbor. From a Salem perspective, this location is sort of a surprising choice. While the other locations are all in heavily touristed areas of the city, this one is well off the beaten path and is where a kid like Max would probably live. So what might have brought them out here? Just a guess, but it might have to do with the fact that Pioneer Village, which stood in for Old Salem Village, is just about 600 feet away. Here we see it in the opening scenes of the film, which is set in Salem Village in 1693. Okay, quick history lesson. And I want to first make it clear, I realize this is a children's fantasy movie. So this is not actually a critique of the film or Disney or anything like that. This is just something that I think most people are unaware of, even if you've ever been to Salem. So the movie opens and we're in Salem Village in the late 1600s where the witchcraft accusations and hysteria took place. We then jump ahead to modern day Salem and you'd assume that we're in the same spot, except we're not. If you want to be in Salem Village today, you actually have to go to the neighboring town of Danvers, Massachusetts. Here's why. So back in the 1600s, there were actually two Salems. There was Salem Village and Salem Town. Salem Town was a prosperous, powerful, and growing seaport city. Salem Village was a rural agricultural area on the outskirts of Salem Town. The land was terrible here, the farmers were very poor, and they were also heavily Puritan in their beliefs. It was in Salem Village that the actual witchcraft accusations took place. It was in Salem Town where the accused were imprisoned, tried, and ultimately punished. In other words, it's sort of like if a bunch of people in Brooklyn were all accusing each other of being witches. They all came into Manhattan to try the cases, and then Manhattan became known as the Witch City instead of Brooklyn. So back again to Salem Village in the movie. This was shot in Pioneer Village, America's first living history museum. Pioneer Village was built in 1930 as the set for a play that took place in Salem 300 years earlier in 1630. The play was successful and the buildings were saved to live on as a museum depicting life for early settlers. So our next stop is Allison's house, where the kids go on Halloween night. Uh, this was shot on Essex Street at the old Ropes Mansion. Ropes Mansion was built in the 1720s for a Salem merchant. It gets its name from a judge who later owned the property. And here's the thing, most tourists stop at the Ropes Mansion, they take a few pictures out front, and then they go on their way. What they don't know is that if you go down this path, just to the side of the house, you will find one of the most beautiful spots in all of Salem, the gorgeous Ropes Mansion Garden. It's free, it's open to the public, and I really recommend everyone have a look if they come to town. The last Salem location featured in the movie is Old Town Hall, where the city's big Halloween party is taking place. This building was built in 1816, but only served as Salem's Town Hall until the 1830s, when it relocated to its present address. Old Town Hall then became a marketplace with food stalls, and in more recent times has been used for performances and events. So that covers the Salem locations in the movie, a pretty great slice of the witch city. Here's the thing though, whenever anyone makes a movie in Salem, Massachusetts, they decide at some point that Salem does not look enough like Salem, especially when they come to the neighboring town of Marblehead. Marblehead is a quaint, well-preserved seaside community just southeast of Salem. Here we see Max bike through Marblehead's Washington Square, and then through the small downtown area. 
Now, people cheat locations all the time. It's just kind of weird to do it when one, the real city is literally right there and just as well preserved, and two, Marblehead has a completely different feel, more of a small New England town. Oh, and did you happen to notice that yellow building Max rode past? That's the old townhouse, Marblehead's original town hall from 1727, and if you ever see Adam Sandler's Hubie Halloween, it's one of the many giveaways that they also thought Marblehead looked a lot better as Salem than Salem. Finally, Max takes a shortcut home through a Salem graveyard, which is actually Marblehead's old Burial Hill Cemetery, founded in 1638 and one of the oldest in New England. Located on a hill, the cemetery has an iconic harbor view that oddly isn't featured in the film. We see Max confronted by bullies here, and several of the actual headstones are legible. If you've ever seen the movie The Good Son, Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood run right past this exact spot. So that's it for real locations. Everything else was shot on back lots around LA. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see a fountain that's just a year or two away from becoming the most famous fountain in television history. So when Hocus Pocus finally came out, my friends and I went to see it in the theater. Ultimately, it was a little below our age group at the time, so I don't remember watching it more than once or twice, and I don't have the same nostalgia for it that I think a lot of younger generations do. That being said, it is incredible how it has stood the test of time. People were literally going up and talking about Hocus Pocus as I was shooting this video around Salem the past week. In particular, I love that it has generated so much excitement for historical locations around Salem that most people were previously unaware of. Now, I know some might say that it's uh, sort of sad that people only want to visit these important historical locations because they were once in a movie. But honestly, why does it matter? The most important thing is that people care about these locations. I've been a location scout for 16 years. I've been to some incredible places. And if there's any common ground to the ones that have disappeared over the years, it's that people stopped caring about them. I think it's safe to say that the locations seen in Hocus Pocus are going to be around for a very long time. And last but not least, we have to credit the locations team on this movie. That was Lori Bolton, Deborah Laub, and Jeff McLean. All right, that's the longest video I've done to date. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do all that stuff you're supposed to do when you enjoy a video, like hit the like button or share it. All right, let me know what movie you want to see next.